guess I'll cover this while waiting on Brad Studs. We see the young rookie Chris Lee in the ring. So smooth. Getting ready for his big RGL challenge. And the lovely is always Chastity Taylor ready in the ring. RGL champion Ben Tyler with the apprentice Chet Sterling. Chris Lee, this kid's loaded with potential, but he's got an uphill climb here. You know the aftermath, they do not fight alone. And let's throw it to Chastity Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. And it's the finals in the RGL tournament. Introducing first, the champion from LaGrange, Georgia, weighing 185 pounds. From the aftermath, he is Ben Tyler. Chris Lee, very, very popular around here. He's best known as an overnight DJ with 102 Jams, the local hip hop station of the Piedmont Triad area. And this guy has a lot of supporters out here, but he has got a big, big test in front of him. Undeniably so, Cecil Scott, Ben Tyler, the reigning Rising Generation League champion. And that, that championship is contested in a tournament every year. Absolutely, and it's very rare that we see the, the defending champion hold on to it through the tournament. We have never seen the champion retain the title all the way through. The champion has made it to the finals before. Ben Tyler says he will make history tonight and become the first RGL champion to hold on to the championship all the way through the tournament. The task ahead of him, as you said, is Chris Lee, perhaps the most promising young rookie we've seen come along in years. Long way, and uh, I actually spoke to him in the back a moment ago during intermission, and I mean, the kid, he looks confident, but at the same time, I can tell he looks very nervous. This is a big stage, and I've been there. I was in the RGL uh, finals in 2006, and it's a nerve-wracking experience. It's your first big stage, your first big match. Heads up, and Tyler gets Ooh. caught with a bullet right to the face. And I told Chris Lee, the nerves are gonna be there, but go out there and do your thing and it'll come to you. And I told him Ben's still gonna beat him though. A kick right to the face from Tyler. And Tyler is a young guy, but he's been around a couple of years here now at CWF. Uh, kid that started out very unassuming, kind of flew under the radar, and then he joined with the aftermath, and it's been all uphill for him from there. Undeniably so. And Chet Sterling getting involved there. He does not like Chris Lee one bit. We alluded to this earlier during the Chet Sterling and Cyrus tag team bout, but there has also been a rivalry between Chet Sterling and Chris Lee. Absolutely. They face each other at uh, Ultimate Survivor. Ultimate Survivor. And, and, you know, like you said, Ben Tyler's been around for a couple of years. He's almost out of the eligibility. This is his last year to be eligible for the RGL tournament. Ugh. These two have got an intense rivalry developing over who's the best rookie, the rookie of the year. Right. These guys technically have another three years in this division. Of course, the RGL Championship, the Rising Generation League Championship, oh, was created in 2002 as a championship for young up-and-coming wrestlers in the Mid-Atlantic. Every year, graduates from the Mid-Atlantic Dojo and other standout rookies from all over the Mid-Atlantic are invited to participate in the tournament. The tournament culminates every year at Battlecade at our anniversary Supercard. Some past champions have included Kamikaze Kid, Cyrus, Trevor Lee, Jason Miller, and others. Roy Wilkins. Roy Wilkins. Was was a former RGL champion. He, he Cheetah actually, Kid. He won the finals that year that I was in it. It is absolutely uh, the first step in a, a legendary storied career for many people here in the Mid-Atlantic has been cover, has been the RGL championship, and that is exactly what Ben Tyler has said. Ben Tyler has said that this is his first step in, in a long and legendary career. I mean, some guys use it as a springboard and really going to do something, and the reality is some guys never really surpassed it. Oh, surpassed that 
stage, they never really surpassed that success. I mean, we've seen former champions that never really went on to do much. Kitchen sank him right in the guts. I mean, that's just the realities of the business, unfortunately. We talked a little bit about Chris Lee, a nighttime DJ at 102 Jams here in the Mid-Atlantic area. He's also a nightclub promoter in Greensboro. He's a hard-working young man. He's got a work ethic. He's dedicated. And in the lead-up to this match, in the weeks leading up to this match, Ben Tyler sent in some, some video interviews, and, and Ben Tyler basically mocked Chris Lee's work ethic. He yes, basically uh, looked down. On Chris Lee for having that 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 tireless work ethic that he has. I mean, this is a kid. He doesn't really take a day off. I mean, if he's not wrestling, he's working in the outside world, so to speak. And the guy has a lot of contacts. He's got a lot of fans. I mean, this is a well-known guy around here. And he has, like I mentioned before, you got out here. He has a ton of supporters for a rookie. But I gotta say, and you've covered from Tyler. Only got two. I, you've kind of got on to me a little bit about about being a Chris Lee supporter, but I've got to say, the point you just made, he's got a lot of media contacts. He's got a lot of friends in, in, in the concert business and club business. He knows a lot of people in this area. I mean, the guy but was Chris Lee with... has not rested on those laurels whatsoever. Chris Lee is here in the ring at the dojo four or five days a week. He's in the gym every day. And studying he, tape. You know, this is not a uh, Johnny Fairplay type individual that wants to piggyback off of whatever. Oh, oh beautiful. Beautiful. This is not a guy that wants to piggyback off of what he's accomplished and, and try to BS the wrestling career out of it. This is a guy that wants to be a professional wrestler in the worst way. way. And right now, nice he's block. on the cusp of capturing the Rising Generation League Championship from Ben Tyler. I mean, this is a guy, he was hanging out with R. Kelly of all people last week. And like you said, he doesn't rest on that. Going for a German suplex, but it's blocked. Good wrestling from these guys. Talked about the experience level, but both guys have had counters. Both guys have had their wits about them the whole time. Nope. Slips out. Again, the counter wrestling has been solid. Power Bob. Woo. This, I was talking to Chris Lee a couple. I talked to this guy way too much, I just realized, but he was asking me for tapes. He wants to study matches from other areas, and that was in a case right there, a Blue Thunder driver that. You know they make DVDs now. Well, tapes is a general term. More like a general term. Illegally download from the internet. Hey, fame. Chris Lee looking good in the corner here. Poised and ready to strike. But we saw a case of that right there with the Blue Thunder Shades of Junakiyama. And he's got him in the corner. Fires away. Huge forearm. I think it's a case Ben didn't know what was coming there. Boom. Drills him with the reverse DDT. Only got two. And I think more than anything, the partnership with Trevor Lee has really brought out the best or the worst, if you will, of Ben Tyler. Undeniably, these guys have found themselves as a tag team and as a part of the aftermath. And these guys are definitely hetero life mates, if there ever were one. Well, they're definitely life mates. Oh, Ben's in a bad way up here in the corner. Chris Lee always thinking in that ring. Looks like we're going to see a high risk maneuver from the rookie. What I'm curious to see is if Chris Lee gets gets to, uh, frustrated when he can't put Ben away. We see a point. With a lot of rookies, they'll hit something big and think that's it and don't know what to do if it doesn't work. And I think I saw a little bit of it right there when, oh, never mind. Off the top, but Ben Tyler goes out to the floor. I love me some soul food myself. And we got a little bit right there. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, to get him back in the ring. Chris Lee needs to get him back in the ring. A count out. If I'm Chet, I would keep Ben out there. I would, too. Or, count of seven. Actually, if I'm Chet, I would get the heck out of the way. Well, Chris Lee's going to break the count. Nope. <laughs> oh, on to Ben Tyler on the floor. Yeah, Chet has been dove on enough tonight. He got the heck out of Dodge. Undeniably so. And Chris Lee just took a big chance there, but it paid off for him. We might get a double count out here. What happens then? Does Ben Tyler keep the title? I would think so. Because technically, well, technically, don't you vacate the title for the tournament? We're, we're dangerously close to a double count out. Red Jones is not being uh, Red nine. liberal with that count at all. He hates kids. He kind of does. He's a terrible referee, by the way. Chet Sterling grabbing the ankle. Tyler looking for the roll up. 
Rapoli oh, got two. He should have got a handful of tights there. Oh, Super, super kick. kick drilled him in center ring. I mean, drilled him. And at this point, I wonder if Chris Lee has it mentally to come back for this. Great ring positioning, two. Man, oh man. Red Jones, like him or not, was right there and called it two. You know, I'd be heavyweight champion if not for Red Jones. And not that. As the Gibson Bill Mid Atlantic Sportatorium comes alive for Chris Lee. And we see a little bit of frustration from Ben, too. He, he figured he'd probably put this rookie away. Jawbreaker, a kip up. Chris Lee showing his athleticism, goes for a big side kick. Boom! Drilled him. A turn, turn kick right in the face. Is he going to the top? Chris Lee's calling his shot. This kid has got the gold in his eyes. He's got the Mid-Atlantic title in his eyes here, does Chris Lee. Chance up on the apron. Can we get these goofballs off the apron just once? He's taking a chance. Boom! I oh, splash. Landed him. Why is Sterling on the apron? Three count in the center of the ring. Is it Converse again? Converse is out. Converse is protecting the aftermath. Richter, Richter scale. Landed him. Why is Red Jones allowing it? And he, he saw the, he saw him run, but he didn't see the contact. Garbage call. Oh, garbage. Absolute garbage from the aftermath. And these guys have had each other's back all night. The story that is developing tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, in nine minutes, 51 seconds, your winner by pinfall and still rising Generation League champion, Ben Tyler. The story that is developing tonight, whether any of us like it or not, is that Battle K-13 thus far has been owned by the aftermath. Absolutely. Rick Converse says he's Mr. Battle Kane, and he kind of is tonight by Hooker Crook. Aftermath 3-0 and on the evening as a dejected Chris Lee leaves Battle Kane disappointed.